Hello and welcome everybody to MTA34 and um, this is going to be for the uh, 13th of November. Uh, going to be pre-recorded though and um, the topics. Um, it's going to be about races and racism in WoW, right? It's going to be about um, paying for uh, your classic subscription with um, a token from uh, retail or from the normal WoW. Uh, we have a long post from Radek that I wanted to get into and uh, from the Circle K, right? And the Circle K is um, about private servers are the benchmark and then we got items that are unusually good for the level. Alright, let's jump into it and uh, the first one is a quick one. Actually, I forgot the dog last time. I told you there was a really cool dog or a funny dog. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna disappoint you. Okay. So the dog is somewhere here. Where's the dog? Come on, doggy. Um, so, um, I promised you a dog. And there it is. And it says, clicking level 60 and expecting, uh, inspecting his gear. So, there you go. How can a dog look... Whatever. Whatever, really. And the first topic is race exclusive guilds. And it comes in from Faint Serbian. Hmm. And, uh, you know, he says, uh, was anyone ever part of a race exclusive guild? Like all dwarves, gnomes, nels, etc, etc. I'm thinking about starting a, like, starting like dwarf only guild called Defenders of Ironforge or something like that. And of course people are going crazy and they're triggered. Now actually they're not triggered, they're kind of actually, you know, think this is actually funny. Human Macerate, um, Human Macerate's dog bless, he says. And uh, he's right to say that playing human in vanilla was kind of boring, but you know, it's just so brokenly strong. I heard the clan is a decent one race classic guild. But um, aside from that, um, on a more serious note, uh, yeah, there were guilds like this, for example, <clears throat> I think I saw a guild uh, named Lorder on it, on, on some server that would only recruit uh, humans, actually. And with all the pros and cons that had, you know, uh, no druids, for example, they didn't have druids very much in their in their raids, and uh, uh, some, some uh, race-only guilds would um, allow other, like, one or two of the other classes if they just couldn't be it. I mean, just imagine a... Oh my god, just imagine a gnome-only guild. <laughs> no pallies. Disgusting. And, you know, gnomes only. That's... Oh god, please no. And it's just wrong. I, I just think it's wrong. Or tr nah. Whatever, a troll-only guild, just think about this, right? And I think human is the, probably the one that would be most versatile. Because they have basically have all classes. Humans can be most of the classes. So, technically seen, that would probably be your best your best bet to go if you want to still uh, do alright in, in, in the game, right? Because, let's face it, human have warriors, paladins, priests, mages, warlocks, rogues. What else, are you, what else do you need to raid? Maybe, you know, a knight of only guild would have huge problems, I think. Actually, they have pretty. Good. It's it's a tough choice, but you know this is an interesting topic, and um, I think I think I like the idea of the um, this racist guild, <laughs> uh, if you want. Uh, this is actually a pretty funny idea. I, I think you know a Lord Run guild with only humans can actually be a pretty funny thing to do. I mean, this would be something for RP servers. Let me know what you think. There's not very much more to say. Just let your fantasy, you know, take you anywhere and um, think of a dwarf only guild and um, think of the classes they can be. You know, they wouldn't, nobody would have druids basically except for a knight of only guild. And uh, it's pretty interesting. So uh, that came in from Faint Serbian and um, I thank you very much. Then uh, Power Slave uh, said on MTA32, um, he said, uh, there's a way. So on live, is there a way to pay for your sub from in-game gold? I stopped playing in Mist of Pandaria and have no one to actually play live. He doesn't want to play live. I think I could play Mist of Pandaria because he still has the version. 
and pay for my classic account. Ed, I already commented on that, um, that says, um, or they said already that um, uh, they would not, um, in you know, let those two systems uh, interfere with each other. You cannot buy your uh, classic subscription with um, in-game gold, if I'm not mistaken, because it's those are two separate. Um, <clears throat> What's it called? Um, economic systems and you know the golden. At least you cannot buy. And I'm very sure you cannot buy it the other way around. You know, buying there won't be like a token in the classic auction house. At least that's what I know. Um, they said that for now, right? How it's gonna end up in the game, I don't know. But um, we'll see because they uh, at least the the uh, designers, uh, lead designers said. Um, well, there's not going to be, not going to be um, any any um, interference between the two systems. So they said um, you cannot buy that stuff with with your um, retail subscription because then what they said is basically you cannot make gold in classic from selling the tokens or anything like that, right? Or you cannot bring anything in from the outside. What that, Whatever that means in the end, I don't know. Because technically it wouldn't matter if you pay for your subscription from BFA, from the gold you made in BFA, it doesn't really matter. As long as there's no gold coming into Classic, just imagine, you get 100,000 gold on your Classic character because you, you know, sold a token or something. Of course that doesn't really work that way, but that should be clear. Um, if you can pay for your subscription, I mean, of course, you can pay for your subscription and then play Classic uh, on BFA. That shouldn't be a problem. It's just, you know, you get what I'm saying. You cannot um, do anything with tokens in Classic so that, you know, the economy stays clean. And that's basically what they try and say. How that's going to look uh, in, in the end, I don't know. That's just what they said uh, in the panels from the BlizzCon. That's direct info from the BlizzCon. I don't know about the rest. So, Power Slave, thank you very much for that comment. And then we're gonna go into the reloot trading video. And uh, Radic comes in again and he says, um, uh, you know, he's basically saying, Late Vanilla, since it was available for EU and a run into misloot uh, issue once. You know, once in two years I played Nostarius, I played Elysium, played Light's Hope. I uh, ran into the misloot again once in three years or uh, whatever, and uh, um, Blizzard wants to add the stupid loot trading. It's basically about why are they adding all these things, okay? And you know, the thing is, I agree with all of this, right? I just want to make this very clear again, and I want to go one more time. I want to go into the into this into this topic before because I I don't want to talk about loot trading and sharding anymore. Because we all agree on it, we don't want it, we just have to see if it's going to be in or not. And the thing is, we agree with this, just get one thing. Blizzard don't you know, want to have the, the loot trading in, because they don't want to employ 10 GMs that do nothing but uh, trade loot around, back and forth, you know, all day, and they want to save resources where they can, and save money. That's the reasoning behind this, and I think we all get that. And to be quite honest, it's really bad. Again, I said in the last video, it's not going to stop me from playing, but that's my very personal opinion because I want these classic servers so bad, right? Um, it's It still sucks so hard. I made a whole video about this. I hate it, but you know what? You know, it's it's I'm, it's it's fairly safe that they're not going to change this. You know, it's it's pretty pretty safe they're not going to change this. And they're probably going to have this in, as well as the 16 debuff slots at the start. Dire Maul is probably debatable, and sharding is probably debatable too. The rest, I'm pretty sure they're going to have in. And everybody probably agrees with this, right? Um, Jack Rowie, we had him in, in the last uh, video. Uh, you guys are absolutely right with everything you say. It's just um, the loot trading is such a time save for them that they're not very likely to, to take it out of the game. That being said, why are they trying to force in the changes? And there you go, that's the answer. It's money, and then they wanna... That's why they are open to Dire Maul being released or not. And that's just something they can just put in or out. 
Same with charting. It saves probably a little bit of resources and, and frees them up. But ultimately, those are not really the money savers for them, so they are open for that. And loot trading is a thing that they uh, probably don't want to don't want to change at all anymore um, because they want to have that in. It saves them money. They don't need to put GMs um, and waste money on them. And uh, if you think about it, the tech, you know, the idea behind that makes sense. It will make guilds become more important ultimately. You don't want a group with pucks anymore, which can be a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Um, we'll have to see how it is. And I. I I'd rather not have it in, um, but uh, it will also strengthen the community um, in, in, in a guild sense. If you go in with pugs all the time, um, yeah, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough topic, man. It's, you can't just always do everything with the guild. Not every guild is also you know, as, as active and, and crazy about everything. And you, you get the idea, basically. It's, it's, man, we could talk about this for hours again. It's just... Um, Nobody wants it in, but um, I think we have to get used to the idea of loot trading, <laughs> to be quite honest. And if they change it for the better, hey, if they change it, it's awesome. We're gonna be all very happy about it. Um, then the Circled K says, mm, A lot of complaints are uh, being made, or uh, being made, are from folks that play on private servers and have been for several years. And often slip not like a private service for getting private servers are mainly based on BC and Wrath stats, not vanilla. They haven't really played vanilla for 14 years. Memories corrupted by Blizzard, Blizz-like servers who did not have the numbers, Blizz do have them. Unlike private servers who basically uh, do best guesswork, Blizz have them. Okay, so this was on M uh, on the demo, right? The problems with demos and charting and. The, the whole gameplay and drama. Well, you're kind of right. You're kind of right. Um, I get that um, people make the assumption that private realms were the, you know, were the thing, and they knew how it was, and they th they think this, you know, a private thinking that Lightbringer was a Blizz-like server is completely wrong. It's just completely wrong. They, you know as our, go our classic server is going to be. But we didn't start out with 16 debuff slots, we didn't start with Dynamo, we didn't start with um, 1.12 talents, we did certainly not... The one thing they changed is the PvP system, Lightbringer, even worse. We did not start ever with a PvP system, ever. Completely unbliss like completely wrong. Furthermore, it, a Rathi Basin didn't come out until very late. On Lightbringer, on every server before that, usually, uh, there were all three battlegrounds available from the start, with weekends even. Completely wrong. Okay, it didn't work like that. And of course, it was always a, a guesswork to make it as close as possible. Um, however, not all the stats were BC and Wrath stats. That's not true. Um, uh, especially, I mean, it's, you know, BC and Wrath were still um, coming from vanilla, so that is the better guess that you have. But um, the clients here are all 1.12 and they didn't do the work from Wrath or BC clients back to vanilla servers or clients. This was not the case. And um, the stats were very much uh, from, from a classic client. So um, that's, you know. And that's because BC was still the, the vanilla stats, basically. Right, and you can you can check uh, how things had changed in in uh, Wrath and PC. So these the developers of these these servers and did actually know what's 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 going on with you know based on stats and all that stuff. <clears throat> but I, I also agree that Blizzard does have the numbers. I'm very much sure that they want to create a very very good experience, and they can do it. I, I very much trust in them. And private servers are definitely not the benchmark. They everybody should. Um, you know, uh, everybody should um, be concerned about and, and think that this was the ultimate way to go, because it certainly wasn't. Okay, it certainly, certainly wasn't. And um, but yeah, I think everybody agrees. I'm very, very much sure, dude. Like, I'm very much sure that every 
or most people, if they had the choice, would not play on a private server, but would love to have Blizzard do it. So, oh yeah, I would, I would partially agree with saying um, Blizzard, you know, will have the numbers, and not all private servers are the, the way to go. Definitely not. But also, they were pretty. They were get, actually getting very much close. They were very, very close to to the experience. Uh, the late servers, not the old servers, but the the later private realms. Like Lightbringer now. But yeah, that came in from Circle K, and um, we're gonna talk about this thing in the next one. Items that are unusually good for their level, but that's a little spoiler there, otherwise this is gonna be very freaking long. So thank you very much for watching uh, MTA34, and um, put stuff in the comments so I can pick it up. I'm glad to hear your guys' opinions about a lot of things, right? About anything, really. And um, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.